All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening. I want to say thank you uh, to Brother Kim and the, your church here uh, for inviting us. We feel honored that we could come and uh, be out here with you all this week. It's, uh, it's our privilege, and I'm so thankful that we can come and be in y'all's meeting here. And it's a blessing, and uh, thankful my wife's able to come and uh, be here with us this week, too, and just uh, enjoy traveling my wife, amen. And also, I'm glad to... My dad, amen, and uh, my mom was able to come, amen, to meet and meet in here with us as well. It's not often that we uh, both get to preach together uh, in, a, in a place, so this is a special treat for, for me as well, you know, get this preach with my dad. I love my dad, amen. Uh, everything, everything, as far as I'm concerned, and I'll brag on him a little bit, brag on the Lord, but the Lord has uh, saved my dad and saved me, but also I'm glad that the, the, the dad that the Lord gave me. And I'm thankful for that because uh, what I am is, is largely responsible to my dad and my mom raising me in church. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm one of them that got saved as a young man. I got saved in 1983. I was just a young kid, uh, six, seven years old. And uh, after I got saved, my dad, for dad was the first one to get saved. And then he started taking us to church. So I've been going to church all my life. Amen. Since 1983. And this is all I ever know is church. Amen. And uh, I, I claim this is my heritage. People look at me, see my dark skin. They say, what is your culture and heritage? I said, Christian, church. Amen. amen. And uh, that's, that's what I know, and that's all I know, amen. So, and I'm thankful for it, amen. Uh, I'm thankful that I do have a goodly heritage tonight, amen. And, uh, and I'm glad for that, uh, that we got saved and been uh, uh, serving the Lord and called to preach and just uh, doing the work for the Lord, amen. And it's good to see some of you others, too, as well tonight that I recognize, and uh, the rest of you, I don't. Hopefully, we'll get to know you the rest of this week. Amen. And thankful for this time here. Got your Bible? Let's go to two places. Go to Mark chapter 4 first, and then Genesis chapter number 15. Mark chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 15. We'll end up there preaching out of Genesis 15. <clears throat> I am an evangelist. It's good to see another brother here who is an evangelist. Amen. Those are offices of the church. Amen. Uh, they are. Amen. God, because I know a lot of preachers don't like to do that. Uh, because, you know, a lot of pastors say, I only use other pastors. And I understand that because a lot of evangelists just, my dad used to say it this way. He said, man, evangelist, he blows into town, he blows up at your church, then he blows out of town. Amen. He blows away. And uh, so a lot of them, they don't, they don't know how to minister to a church and help a church. They kind of just come in and do their thing and then run out the door. Amen. Uh, I always used to like what Earl Hughes used to say. He said, all you need is seven sermons and a fast car. Amen. To be an evangelist. <laughs> And uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes that is what we do need, amen. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's good to see another brother here who's an evangelist, and we're thankful that uh, church today will still use him. God still calls him, and I believe that if you didn't need him, God wouldn't call him. Yes. Amen. Uh, people are always crazy about that. Well, I'm just not going to use him. Well, then don't, amen. But I mean, I think they're still important, uh, part of the body of Christ. And one of the things that we get to do is we get to travel the country and see the, meet the 7,000 that have never bowed the knee. There's a lot of you that don't get to go out and see, and then you know what happens? You kind of get this little mindset that me, my four, no more, I'm the only one right, I'm the only one rightly divided, I'm the only one. No, you ain't. There's a whole bunch of y'all out there serving God that believe like you, probably some of them that believe more than you do. <laughs> Amen. Got more convictions than you. Amen. Got more divisions than you. More, more, more weirder than you. Amen. And so they're out there, amen, they, they just, because they don't contact you or say, say anything to you, don't mean they ain't there, they're out there, amen, they preach, man, they, they stay on the street, man, they hold up signs, they're King James, I mean, they love the Lord, amen, they shout, they get people saved, amen, they're against all sin, the devil, and everything else, amen, and so that's good to see about evangelism, you get to meet them out there in, in the country, and I'm going to let you know tonight, there are still remnant out there, amen, amen. And in this, don't, don't believe the world, don't believe the press. Uh, the Bible says they could not come nigh him for the press. Uh, the, the press hindered people back in the day. They still hinder in the day. Amen. And uh, don't believe them that they're all doing that. No, they ain't. Man, there's still a bunch out there serving God. Amen. All right, here, look at with me at Mark chapter number four. And uh, we're going to read just a couple of verses out of here, the parable of the sower. The Bible says in verse 3, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. 
So here we have a picture of man, a man sowing the, uh, sowing the seed. And as you know, the Lord kind of gives the example what that is. Verse 13 says, we'll skip down. He said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. So he's talking about this man here sowing the word. Now I know under, I understand dispensation was talking about uh, offering the kingdom and whatnot. First giving uh, uh, John Baptist, the Lord, the disciples. I understand all that. But we'll just use a little different application here. I, I'll look at general application. The sower is sowing seed. It's like a preacher preaching the word of God. It's like you giving out tracts out there trying to be a blessing to folks. Trying to get the seed out there. Amen. And whether you know that or not, that is an actual spiritual transaction that's going on. When preaching is going on, that is a spiritual transaction. There's something going on here, man, Bible says there, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There's something going on here from when the man of God has prayed and he, he's, he's asked God to give him something, the Spirit of God's filled him up, and he goes and begins to preach God's Word. There's a spiritual transaction begin to take place in the hearers. He's sowing seed. He's putting out there the words of God. He's putting out what God wants people to hear. He's putting it out there. And the spiritual, since it's a spiritual transaction... Notice what the next verse says there. In that verse, Mark chapter 4, the Bible says there, and there these are those by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. I'll tell you what, that's a great, that's a, not great, but that's a crazy thing right there reading that. Think about it. If it's a spiritual man of God is spiritually trying to feed you, give you the word of God, there's someone immediately coming trying to take it away from you and trying to rob you of what you need. You want something to produce fruit? The Word of God should produce some fruit in you. Amen? Uh, it should produce some fruit in the sense that, man, it calls you to do something with what you hear. Don't be a forgetful hearer, the Bible said. Be a doer. Why ain't Lot being doers? Someone came and took out what was in there. Amen? The devil, Bible says, Satan cometh immediately. Uh, Luke says it this way. He says, then cometh the devil. And notice there how it says there, man, they're like birds. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Revelation chapter 18. Over there it says, well, Babylon's fallen. It says, it's become the cage of every hateful and unclean bird. Amen. Amen. Every foul, unclean spirit. Man, them birds right there, unclean birds, especially the type of bad spirits. Amen. Kind of remind me of all reading in high school. We read Edgar Allan. By the way, I went to public school all my life. Some of you, you was Christian, homeschool, all that good stuff. Amen. But we wasn't. We was raised on a reservation. They didn't have much access to that. So I just want to encourage you. If you go to public school, you say, oh, it's rough. I understand. I know what it's like. I understand peer pressure, but you can make it. You can serve God. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of people say, well, it's not going to, I understand, but I'll tell you what, you can make it. You, that's why I was talking about good dad and good mama. Man, amen. If you just don't let the world raise them, you mom and dad put the time and effort in them children, man, they'll turn out for God. Amen. You pay attention to them. Amen. Amen. I encourage you to do that. And man, they, I was raised around all that. And man, growing up there in school there, man, I was around all that stuff out there. But you know what? The Bible says here that spiritual transaction taking place, that the unclean spirit comes, steals away. And man, the Bible says that those, those, unclean spirit, those unclean birds are a picture of that. And I was thinking in high school when we read a story there by Edgar Allan Poe. Nevermore, Lenore, evermore. The raven. And you ever read that? That guy was a weird guy, wasn't he? I mean, Edgar Allan Poe, he, read, he wrote some weird stuff, man. Telltale Heart. And uh, the one I always, I, whenever I read that one, The Raven, I thought, man, why in the world is this here weird? <laughs> Black bird there, amen? I mean, just something weird about that. Bad spirits. So you see here, the devil is a picture trying to steal what God is trying to give God's people. You know, our, our brother pointed out something last night. It was great teaching last night. If you weren't here, I encourage you to listen to that. Um, you know, I've been trying to figure out what the connection is in spiritual and a lot of electronic age. Because, you know, a lot of times, man, there's something about getting something from God. And then as soon as you go out the door, a lot of people forget it. You know why? Because immediately they jump on their phone and start doing that. And as soon as they do that, everything you heard just. I can't put the connection together between the electronics and 
the spiritual bad negative effect it has on people. But there is. Amen. Man, the people that, especially if they jump on right after service, they can't wait to look at it. When we take a break here in a while, you'll see a bunch of people, a bunch of this, first thing they'll do. I mean, as soon as we take a break here, you're, some of you right now, you already, you already took a break. You already took a break right now. Well, I didn't like him saying that. Nah, 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 nah. That has a hold of you. Do you ever think maybe that's stealing from you? The word from your heart? Man, what was he said? I can't remember. Maybe the reason why it's coming in there, just snatching it right out. Now, I can't make the exact connection, but there's something to it. That's why we preach a lot of youth camps and I preach a lot of young people. It's not till like the middle of the week till these young people get fired up. You have to take their cell phone from them whole week. Wouldn't that be good if we took the cell phone from our parents for a whole week? <laughs> Amen. It might help them, Amen. Well, I don't know if I could. Man, what did you do before you had one? Yeah. Yeah. See, I've grown up in a different generation. We, we knew what it was like to live without it. Yeah. Some of you, you was not born in that generation. You was born, the cell phone and technology was already available. That's all you know. Some of us, we grew up without one. Yeah. Amen. We grew up, man, putting quarters in a phone. Amen. We grew up, man, with mixtape. <laughs> Some of you, that's a playlist. No, it's a mixtape. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. But what's going on there? There's a spiritual transaction going on. The man of God's ministering to you the word of God. And then something else. If it's spiritual, positive, God giving you, there's something spiritual, negative, trying to take away what you had. With that in mind, come now to Genesis 15. We'll read here, and then we'll pray and, and get to preaching more. Amen. There's some liberty here now. I feel like preaching tonight. Amen. 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 Genesis 15, the Bible says here, uh, verse 7, He said unto him, this is God speaking to Abram, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Earl of the Chaldees to give thee this land and inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? He said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto them all these and divided them in the midst and laid each one piece against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror, great darkness fell upon him. He said unto Abraham, No, but sure, thy seed shall be a stranger. The land is not theirs and shall serve them. They shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve. Will I judge and afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Uh, we'll stop reading there because uh, the rest of that has to do with God, the Abrahamic covenant being given. But where I want to call your attention to, God has given a promise to Abram here. And Abram has done this altar. And on this altar, he's offered up some animals, made a bloody sacrifice here. And the Bible says as soon as he did that, verse 11, the fowls came down upon it. All of a sudden, these unclean meat-eating birds started coming right down upon it. And the Bible says, Abram, he had to drive them away. He couldn't just let it be. Amen. And so tonight, you know, I thought about calling the message, amen. I, you have called it before, Abram and the angry birds, amen. <laughs> Instead, I'll call it tonight, I'll call this thought here, chase away the crows. Amen. There's something you need to chase away. Don't let them devour what, what God has given you. Don't let them steal what God has given you. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord in heaven, we're thankful for this time here. We pray that the blood of Jesus would sanctify this place. And God, I pray you would uh, stand against, rebuke, and run off any unclean spirit that may try to hinder the preaching of your word. God, I pray, Lord, your word would have a free course. I pray your Holy Spirit would fill me. And I preach, and I pray your spirit would fill those that would listen. May you give us spiritual understanding. Have your way tonight, dear God. Do as you see fit. Uh, bless the folks that come out, Lord God. There's much money 
effort, energy, sweat, Lord God, and prayers have gone into this meeting. And I pray you bless this church. Pray for this pastor and his wife. Bless them, Lord, in their ministry here. And Lord, the rest of these uh, ministries that I represent it here tonight, God, bless them as well. May they, what they got, Lord God, may it help them to keep standing for you, Father. Bless our time together. Shut us in from every care, worry, and distraction going on outside these doors for a little while. May we just enjoy you, your presence. May your word feed us. May you help us, Lord. Meet with us in a good way. We love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Help me, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I want to preach on this thought here about the chasing away them crows. Chase away them birds. You know, uh, what we want to preach a little bit, the, the subject, I guess, would be spiritual warfare. You know, uh, in our travels, I've uh, been traveling across the country uh, been, uh, for since 2008 full-time as an evangelist. I've been going through, uh, somebody asked this way, it was 43 of the 50 states been able to preach at. Been able to go overseas, amen. Uh, that brother here, I greeted him in Tagalog the other night, amen. I said, Maganagabi. He just kind of looked at me like, what does that mean? <laughs> I said, well, I never come across a Filipino that didn't know what I didn't say. <laughs> amen. I thought, man. You know, as Navajos, when we grow up, and our, the older Navajos, when they greet us in Navajo, they would, when we wouldn't say, I don't know what you mean, they would rebuke us, and they would say, shame on you for not knowing your language. But I won't say that, amen, dude. <laughs> amen. But you know, traveling across the ocean, preaching over there, you know what I find? In the last couple of years, especially since 2020 and this year, we've seen a lot of spiritual resistance grow. Uh, there was a man, you know, that uh, right, right before the quarantine last year broke, uh, four days in forced quarantine, March. Before that, there was a man, I read this story about a man up there, and I think it was either New Hampshire or Maine, or Vermont, one of the areas of New England up there. This man, he was a lost man. Now, this is what I'm starting to tell the lost man. He was out. He was a, a part of a, a Buddhist, and he was just a white fellow out there. And he, he told him, he said, I'm going on a, something like, I don't remember what it was, like a 40-day, or it was like a four-month fast or something. I'm fasting from everything, just going to have a little bit of food, minimal food. I'm going out into the wilderness, going to meditate. This guy was Buddhist. And he gave his, uh, his, his Buddhist master, whoever that was, he told me, he said, instructions, when you come see me, only come see me every other day. And don't tell me about what's going on. He said, I'm trying to get away from everything. He said, uh, he said unless something is life-threatening to my family, don't tell me anything's wrong. So he said, so he would only see this Buddhist master every other day for about the next three, four months there. And so he went out there and started fasting, doing his thing, whatever his spiritual thing out there. And he was gone. And while he was gone, the whole world fell apart. Went into lockdown, quarantine, all that stuff you remember last year that happened. And everything, it was weird. And uh, when he come out, man, I'll tell you, he come out to a whole different world. He had no idea. And it, you imagine what he kind of surprise he met. And they asked him, they said, what was it like? And he said, well, he said, I went out there to try to meditate and do things. He said, but he said, something strange. He said, while I was out there, he said, there seemed to be this overwhelming sense of fear that had gripped the world. He said, I couldn't tell what was wrong. He said, also, there seemed to be a sense of dread and foreboding. He said, I just... I couldn't understand, and I, and I thought it was my family, he said. So every time I'd see the master, he said, he wouldn't say anything about my family. So that was the specific instructions. Don't tell me anything out there. He said, unless my family's in danger and they need me, then let me know, he said. But since he was never saying anything, he said, I could never explain it. He said, little did I know that this was all going on in the world. I said, why do you tell us that? Here's a lost man. In touch with the spiritual side somewhat of that part of the world, sensing fear, sensing, uh, man, bad, man, and bad to come. I've traveled across the country, my wife and I, we've been different preachers. Every one of them tells the same thing, man, there's, they talk about some of them fighting bouts of depression. Going through some, man, bad stuff. And say, man, just this, this lockdown, this quarantine. And, and people just kind of, some make fun of it saying, you know, well, it's just, uh, oh, it's just because people got their device thing where they can't go in. Uh, it might be that, but then there could be something else to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there could be other spiritual wickedness going on at this time. So how do you meet that? 
How do you as Christians stand to that? You know what Abram did? The Bible says Abraham, he went and got this offering. God gave him a special promise. God said, I'm going to man bless your seed. I'm going to bless men. And you shall all nations of the world be blessed. And I'm calling you and make of you a great name. God was giving all this to Abraham. And everything that Abraham did right there, I mean, that, that God gave Abraham. I'll, I'll read this to you here. What God, uh, what he dedicated, the devil wanted. What he decided to do, the devil wanted to destroy. What had died on this altar, the devil desired to revive, man, to make it alive again. His devotion to God was something he wanted to steal. Everything that, man, uh, Abram was doing here in this life here, man, you know what? The fowls, man, that picture of unclean spirits was trying to destroy it. You know what Abram did? He just didn't sit there and say, well, maybe it'll work itself out. Well, you know, greater is he that's in you than he in the world. It should be all right. No, he didn't say, well, you know, you know it's, it's probably okay. You know, it'll be all right. You know what kind of bugs me? And among young men is being passive. Just sit there and watch and say, oh, it'll be all right. No, it ain't. I remember we used to take our trash out to the yard. You know, the, you take your trash to the, in the dumpster and you put it out there. Now you put your dump trash out there. When it gets too full, the lid won't close. I remember we had these crows that would come in. And these crows, they would go there and they start picking at the trash. So the next morning you get up, there would be trash all over the ground. Them crows just dug through it and man, they threw it everywhere. And you're like, ah! You go out there and mad and picking it all up, stinks. And you're putting it back in the dumpster. And them crows, they're there to fly. The next time I get ready, man, here they are. I see them crows. Oh, here they come. Man, I run out the door. Hey! I slap my hand. And them crows, they all fly off. So I teach them. But you know, I learned that crows and ravens are pretty smart. I hollered and, and slapped my hand. That time they flew off. The next time, man, they get on my trash. I run there. Open the door. Hey! And then you know what? They just kind of looked at me. Ah. <laughs> then I, oh man, give me something. I'll grab something. I'll run off the porch after them. And then now they take off. Oh, they fly off. They're like, he's never come off the porch before. So now they, they run out. <laughs> and then they fly away over there. And then they sit on the wire way over there. And then, ah. car, car. Man, now I come back. Next time, man, I said, man, I better get it. Man, then they come out. Hey, I start yelling. He's my hand. Get something. Run out the door. And I had to, to literally run to the trash can and, man, throw something at them. Then they finally fly off. You know what they kept learning? How far I would go to chase them off. But if I didn't put no effort, after a while, I just like, well, go on, get out of here. They're like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> We're not leaving until you run us off. You know what happened? Spiritual wickedness, man. You know what can happen, man? It might take a, this time, it might, you might meet it with a prayer. Next time, you might have to do a little more than your prayer. Next time, you have to do something else. Keep going on. I, I think the Lord said it this way. He said, uh, the disciple said, Lord, this boy, this man has got his son, he's a lunatic. How many dads can testify that right there, amen? <laughs> my son's a lunatic. And he said, Lord, my son is a lunatic. Can you help him? brought them to your disciples but they couldn't cast them out and the disciples said Lord why couldn't we do it because the Lord said this kind come not forth but by prayer and fasting he said hey it's going to take a little more effort on your part to deal with this there's some things in this world spiritual wickedness that you're going to have to take a little more effort to deal with and I believe, man, the more the world's turning and the more that we're getting closer to coming of the Lord Jesus and the more that, man, the Antichrist is getting ready to take over the world, man, the more you and I are going to have to step up to it. They stood to us. We got to step to it. What I find a lot of days, nowadays, they're just kind of like, oh, well, it's okay. Too much passiveness. Sweetness and... Oh, we just got to love them, brother. I don't know. Some of that crowd, I don't know about loving them because they might love you back. You know what I mean? Especially in this town right here. In this town we're at here, y'all know what I'm talking about? 
Yeah. There's some of them, I wouldn't want them loving me back. Good night, man. Amen. Now you can. Go ahead. Say, we're going to win him. Go ahead, win him. But I'd be worried about them backsliding too. <laughs> Nod your head right there. Amen. That was kind of funny, but it's the truth. If a guy's a drunk and he backslides while he's drunk, all he can do is get drunk. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of that stuff don't reform. Yeah, they might be regenerated, say, but man, there's, not, there's some of that stuff. To, my dad used to say this. I said, Dad, why is that guy like this? Why is it? He said, because salvation does nothing for the old nature. Amen. You still got it after you get saved. You might have a new man on the inside, but that old man still lives there with you too. Amen. Amen. What did Abram have to do? Man, he got him a stick, a rod, and started chasing them fowls off. Spiritual wickedness nowadays, you're going to have to, man, get yourself a rod. You're going to have to get yourself something and run it off. Man, there's things wanting to destroy your family. There's things wanting to destroy your church. There's things wanting to destroy your ministries, wanting to destroy your family, your marriage, your home, to destroy everything you got. You're going to have to stand up and meet and say, no, you can't have this. This is something God gave me. This is something God blessed me with. I ain't going to let them have it. Amen. Like I said, the last, in the last year and a half, man, it seemed to get, it's, it's stepped up a notch. It's not let up. So I hope things go back to normal. Well, I don't think they will. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom, but man, it just don't seem like it going there. Hey Amen. We live in the South and we are a little more relaxed than you all over there. There's some things just kind of a little more relaxed, but it's still, it ain't going to go back. Don't hold your breath if that's what you're waiting for. Yeah. Hey Amen. Man, uh, I think brother pointed out good last night. A lot of it is just a precursor. They're, they're trying to find ways to control people. And the funny thing is people let them. Yeah. 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 I often wonder, can they stop everybody on this plane from doing one thing? Wow. Y'all, yeah. because they get real... It's funny how people who never had power before now have it. Yes, yes. And they act weird about it. Yes, yes. Amen. They never had, you know, it's like the county health guy who never was in charge of nothing. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, he's in charge of a whole county. Yeah. And he's, now he's like, man, what do I do? You know, like, man. And he's over there making all these rules for everybody. Never, he never could lead a Boy Scout troop. Now he's got a whole county to take care of. And you're thinking, man, amen. Amen. And man, it's like these flight attendants, man, who just were used to be real nice, a blessing. Now, as far as you're, they're, they're part of the Gestapo, as far as you're concerned. Man, they're ready to. Amen. Never had an ounce of power before. Now, yesterday, this is the announcement on the plane. And my flight attendants out there, they're representative of the captain. Whatever they say is good as me saying it. I'm like, really? Wow, man, you will, be, you will be banned from flying effective immediately. Like, man, so serious. Then that's what got me thinking. What if all of us in here just took our masks off and just said, hey. Amen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But what's the thing? Everybody follows yeah. without thinking. Yeah. I'm not trying to incite nothing. I'm just saying, why don't people think? Why is everybody just going along with everything? Amen. Why don't people ask questions? Amen. Why don't people try to find out some things? You know why? It's precursor. Some of the strong delusions. And no, and you say, how in the world could the whole world believe? Look now. They're just blindly following everything. God forbid you should think for yourself because when you think for yourself, now you're like, oh, look at him. Oh, like, hey, just chill out. I'm not hurting you. Man, I'm 12 feet away from you. I'm double it. <laughs> Stay over there. Hey, Amen. You know, I mean, you're, for you to argue with me, you're breaking social distance. Stay over there. Hey, Amen. Isn't it funny how no common sense anymore? And, I, and I'm not knocking some, some of you right now. Some of you come over after, well, for God, just, uh, didn't tell me about some relative. I'm not knocking. I'm not being mean about that. I'm just thinking some of this stuff. What happened to common sense? 
It's all, oh, man, a lot of it's getting ready for something. I like to play chess. Do y'all like to play chess, some of you? Come on, man. There's a couple of you. I guess if I asked a bunch of room full of Russians, they would have been, yeah, we all play chess, you know. I should have asked math here, you know, math, Asians, you know. I mean, that would have been worked out. But anyway, chess. You got an opening game, you got a middle game, and you got an end game. You got your openings, different openings, and then you, after you get your openings, then you get your middle game going, then you get down to your end game, and then you practice these various, you learn how to play chess, you learn to play, move, you get those things. In your end game, you want to have all your pieces in the right place. You have your pieces counted out. You got eight squares times eight squares. You got 64. You know how each one moves. Double that with the other person. You got these things counted out. One, two, three, four. And how much is going to happen? What they're going to do? What possibilities? You got all that in your head. And you're in game. You're ready. If I do that in 14 moves or six moves, seven moves, I can do this. You got all that figured out. But your pieces had to be in the right place. And who knows, man, a lot of pawn. Man, a pawn, man, it'll take six moves to get to the other side to get a queen. So you got that in your mind. You got, I can move this and you keep it right there. There's an opening. I can make it, man. All that, you got all that. But you got in the right place, you're in game. When it's set up, you make your move. So why'd you tell us all that? That's like what the world's getting ready for now. There's, there's, man, there's strong delusion. There's a mystery of iniquity that's already worked. It's got an end game set up. And the world's playing right into it. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to run off and chase off as much bad stuff as we can. Give the gospel to this world. Let them know, hey, man, you don't have to go along with everything out there. I mean, you don't have to do like me, but hey, you know what? There's still someone that loves you. His name is God. And the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, still died for your sin that you might have life. You still can be set free. Physically, you might be bound. Mentally, you might have been given. But hey, there's still someone that can give you truth and set you free from all that. But it's going to take some extra effort on our part. Used to be, man, we could just go out past tracks out and have a great time and, and preach, street preach. Now we've got to go a little bit more effort. Amen. It's harder. It's not as like it used to be. It's no longer. There's no more. It's, it's now, it seems like middle ground is gone. It's now you're either Biden or Trump. You're mass, no mass. You're vax, not vax. It's like, why can't somebody just be here no more? There's no more neutral anymore. I, well, I'm undecided. I'm not sure. There's no one. No, if you're not with me, then just, I mean, they just tear you up. You're like, oh, he's up on the coffee there, buddy. Amen. A little too much there. Hold on. Amen. How you, gonna, you can't see it my way. Oh, just chill out. I don't, I don't need to. I don't have to see it your way. See, that's what's going on now. And that whole thing just divisive. It's causing us as Christians now we got to stand up and say, hey man, we got to stand up and do what's right. Yeah. Chase away these birds. Yeah. Man, there are a lot of these birds we got to chase away. I wrote down, there's a whole bunch. Some of you probably preach this better than I could. And, you know, there's deception. Yeah. The truth is what will run off these crows of deception, discouragement. By the way, let me say this emotional problems are a real thing. You ever read Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus went carrying people of disease? The Lord Jesus acknowledged several things. He said there was those that had palsy, which was physical. He said those that were lunatic, which was mental. He said those which possessed with devils, which is spiritual. And then he said those that had torments. That's emotional. None of those were the same. If they were, why are they mentioned listed separately? The Lord acknowledged spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical problems among people. And he said his affirmative is he took upon him himself. Amen. I'm glad the Lord did that. The Lord is able to deal with those kind of things. And there's genuine people that got some things messed up here. There's things messed up emotionally, some people right now. Man, some of that, we've got to help the people out here. Man, give them the truth. Man, encourage. Run off some of that stuff. Amen. No, we have that, man. You got, man, uh, the so, uh, uh, discord, gossip. Hey, man. 
I, I just, I, I appreciate everything, man, the internet, uh, you people that use the internet, YouTube and all that for good. But there's a bunch of you out there just full of discord and gossip. Well, we like to pray for so-and-so. And then they, they, then they let every, everybody know what so-and-so did and involved in. No, you just wanted to let everybody know what they were doing. But pray for them. But pray for them. They have this problem. No, just pray for them. You don't need to know all the dirty laundry. Oh, that'll help me pray better. No, no, you just, man, you're just a busybody. You just want to know everything. <laughs> Amen. Some of that stuff, that's how, no longer can you deal with stuff in a local church anymore. Because now it's spread across the country before we even leave the service. Yeah. Amen. Right. Somebody's going to send out a tweet, a, man, a, a, a post, a thumbs up, a like somewhere. Amen. Oh, man, I done hit it right here, I could tell, because a lot of you just didn't like that. What is that? That's, that's all they care about anymore. Now, I'm not saying, it can be used right here. A good example. Used for God's glory. Get the gospel out. But there's some folks, they don't, they don't do that no more. That's right, you're right. They're not interested in that. There's just all that stuff they're tied up in. It's stealing from them. They don't even know it. Crows of lust. Run off those crows of lust. Amen. People have access nowadays to stuff on the internet that you used to have to go to a different part of town to find yeah see i grew up in a generation where you had to go to a different part of town to find bad stuff people had to sneak around to these places to find bad stuff now you don't have to it's on your phone amen see we're mixed company here so we're not going to be real plain but you know what i'm talking about that's why you can't trust kids with that that's why you got to pay attention to everything they're doing and involved with. And if you think, oh, I trust my son, my daughter. You're an idiot if you trust them. They're flesh, just like you. Oh, mine's real spiritual. Praise, read the Bible. It don't matter. Spirituality is not, a, not, not the question here. It's hormones. That's what's in question. Unless your child was born without them then you can not worry about them. Amen. I don't mean to be so plain, but right there, some of you need that. Because you're up here, you think, oh, it's okay. You don't understand my family. We were raised, no, no, no. You don't understand the flesh. You're not going to whip it. When you get complete victory over the flesh is that when you die or when Jesus comes, you get the new body. That's when you get complete victory. Between now and then, it's always going to fight you. You got to run off them, them things. Chase them off. What do you chase them off with? Scripture. How did the Lord deal with the devil? I'm always amazed by that. The Lord Jesus, God in the flesh, could have basically just said, devil, leave me alone. I'm God. And the devil would have had to have. Why? Because God in the flesh. The temptation really only goes on because the Lord lets it. Amen. People today are funny. Oh, what if Jesus could have said, oh, don't even go into there. Don't even go there. I mean, the thing is right here, man, the, the idea right here is this. It wouldn't, the whole thing would never happen had God not let. He's in control the whole time. But do you ever notice how the Lord dealt with him? He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Why did he do that to show you and I to deal with spiritual wickedness? We need to use Bible. We need to be able to quote Scripture. There's things that you're going to end up dealing with. You know how you deal with it? Scripture. You know what people remember more than anything else? Scripture. I remember went knocking door knocking with a guy. We started church here in Winslow, Arizona. And years ago, we was knocking on the door. And the guy came to the door. And I said, hey, we're from, you know, Open Door Baptist Church. We'd like to invite you to church, you know. And he stopped us. He said, oh, you guys are church people, huh? Preachers. I said, yeah. He said, I guess you guys believe in the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Along with Jesus and God. I said, yeah, I believe in God. And I, I, may, I may believe in the Easter Bunny too, you know. <laughs> Answer a fool according to his folly. And the mom said, yeah, you probably think Santa Claus is real too. Maybe. You know, I, I, 
Hadn't you gone to the mall lately? I seen him. <laughs> and you? Well, you know, you just believe all that fairy tale stuff. Well, it's fine all, but the Bible says you must be born again. Amen. And then he kept arguing, fussing, and then kept saying, Well, the Bible says you must be born again. The Bible says you must be born again. The Bible says you must. I mean, everything he argued and hollered, you, uh, you must be born again. Finally, he slammed the door. I don't know how many times we quoted that verse to him. But you know what? He's going to remember late at night, laying there. <laughs> you must be born again. You must be born again. Scripture. Then also he's going to say, there's a preacher here, no Santa Claus and then an Easter bunny. Amen. <laughs> But he's going to remember, you must be born again. Yes. Amen. Passage of Scripture. Praying. More than ever, you need to be praying. You ought to spend time in your prayer. You ought to have a good prayer closet. You ought to have a list that you pray over. Amen. There ought to be some things you pour out your heart to God over. There ought to be some things that are just broken. In you when you pray over things. Amen. Amen. And there's some things you probably should be arguing a little bit. And I don't mean disrespect to the Lord. God knows me. There ought to be some things you ought to be kind of arguing with God about a little bit. You say, why? Be honest. Some of you here, you would never, oh, I would never say it to the Lord. That's why your prayer line don't grow. Because you're just too spiritual and too, too religious to sometimes, Lord, I just got to tell you this. Your God, this. Yeah. When you read Luke 24, them two disciples there on Emmaus Road, when they're walking with him, the Lord said, He said, What man of communication are these you have one to another as you walk along and are sad? Now that's funny because the Lord knows what they're talking about. But he's asking. He said, What are y'all talking about? Y'all so sad. He knows. But he's asking. Are you getting this? He said, why are you all so sad? He was concerned that they were sad. He was concerned what they were talking about. And he said, man, why are you that way? And they said, art thou a stranger in Jerusalem? That's not know the things come here to pass. And he said, what things? <laughs> Forgive my, I, this is not dishonoring the Lord, but is the Lord playing dumb? He's like, what things? What are you talking about? Why did he want, why did he ask that? He wanted them to tell him. Yes. Amen. You know how some of you pray? Well, the Lord knows all those things. You're general in your prayer, and that's why you generally don't get an answer. That's why you don't have no general man thing. Man, I got testimony. I pray for this. God answer. You don't have no specific testimony over answered prayers. Because you're just general. Just generalize it all. And the Lord said, What things? And when they asked them, then they told them. And the Bible says there, they pour out their heart. They said, of all things that happened in Jerusalem, he said, we thought that this was, if you read it, they're basically saying, we thought he was the Messiah, but it don't look like it. They vented their frustration. They vented that the God we're following, we think he was the Christ, but it's three days and we don't know. Some said he's a lie, but we don't know. Then the Lord said, oh, fool, slow to heart to believe. All the prophets is written. And the Bible says he began a Bible study there through the Old Testament, bringing himself out. And man, all that, wow, they're pouring out their heart. We believe in this, but it didn't work out. It's kind of like me. Lord, Lord, I, I, Lord, I believe this, but God, sometimes it's not going the way I want it. God, I've given all I got, but God, it's just not working out. I, I put my best effort, God, and it's not going the way I want it, Lord God. God, will you help? And man, the Bible says he poured it out there. And when he poured out with them, he said this. The Bible says they later on said, did not our heart burn within us? That spiritual heart burn, man, when he began to open by, uh, by the way the scriptures to us. That's prayer. That's how you're going to run off a lot of that stuff. You're pouring out your heart. Pouring out what's in here and putting it on the altar, not in complaint, but rather, man, just say, Lord God, I, this is what I want, Lord God. But Lord, it's not going the way I want. But God, I, I'm ready to accept your will, but sometimes it's hard. Because you know why? This kind don't come forward, but by prayer and fasting. 
Your prayer is what's going to run them off. Passive scripture, preaching is going to run them off. The power of the blood is going to run them off. Yeah. Amen. 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 We, we grew up on a reservation. And a reservation, some of you know, we're, my dad and I, in case you hadn't figured it out, we're Navajo Indian. Amen. Let me just settle this for y'all. We don't do feathers. <laughs> so don't ask me about feathers. Amen. Don't, don't come up and say, how about teepee? We don't do teepee. <laughs> Amen. And we still scalp dumb folk who ask us dumb questions. <laughs> Amen. You ask us dumb in the question, we'll take your hair. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But on that reservation, it's a large reservation. Same size state of West Virginia, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on there. Spiritual wickedness. But you know how we had to deal with a lot of it? Pleading the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You had to get out, man, sometimes, man, scripture and underline it. Open your Bible. Leave an open Bible in the house with verses on the blood. Underline. Print them out and put it on the wall. Pray tonight, Lord, may the blood of Jesus cover and sanctify us. Lord, man, we, we travel. Some of you that travel do the same thing. We go to these motels, and man, we get in there, and Lord, first thing, Lord God, may you sanctify this room with the blood of Jesus. We have no idea what's going on here. Don't let it cleave to us. Don't let it bother us. Lord, run it out from here. That's how you're going to have to deal with this spiritual wickedness we're dealing with. Run them off. Don't let them camp out on your doorstep. Don't let them build nests in your life. Don't let them devour up the God, what God has given you. You need the power of the blood. You need praying, you need scripture, you need preaching. You need the praises of God. Sometimes it's good to run them off with the praises. I'll get this and we'll be done here. You know, the praise of God, man, will help you run off a lot of that bad stuff. Man, just bragging the Lord, either testifying. Sometimes, man, it's a good song. Bible says, man, evil spirit, man, came upon Saul. And the Bible says, David, he took that heart and to play on that heart. When he played on that heart, the evil spirit departed from Saul. Man, good music ran off the bad spirit. Music is spiritual. The opposite of the coin is if good music ran off bad spirit, that means there's bad music that brings them around. There's probably some music that some of you like that, man, probably brings them around. I know some of you Asians, that K-pop was real popular with y'all. I, I don't understand it. it, it bunch of weird-looking people, man. I, I, I don't listen to that. No. And what, what's the deal with karaoke, man? Why y'all love karaoke so much? Amen. Oh, I've been to... China, Japan, the Philippines. I understand, amen? But man, some of that stuff, you don't need to be around that. It's attracting something you don't want. The good stuff runs it off. Get you out some good music. You know, last year we, we, we travel as evangelists. We travel and preach different places. That's how people always, they, their people are still amazed by evangelists. We was in a church this year in Arkansas. People in that church never heard of a full-time van just traveling like you, brother. They said, so let me get this straight. You, 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 you live just on meetings? You don't have a job? Huh? That's what we do, man. We travel, preach meetings. So, man, that's a totally live by faith. Like, yeah, like you're supposed to, yeah. You live by faith, yeah. Man, wow, I've never heard of that. So you just go from church to church and, and have meetings and Really? That's a thing? I was like, yeah. He was told an independent, Bible Baptist church, King James Church. Still amazed by it. There's full time to you. With that in mind, man, when that whole quarantine shut down, people start calling us in March said, brother, we don't know how things are happening. So, man, we're just going to, we're going to postpone. Then after a while, man, we're, you know what? We'll just cancel. So for my wife and I, from probably the same as you, brother, March till July last year, zero meeting, no church, nowhere. And you say, what's going to happen then? God took care of us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Man, we, we was there at the house, and the churches weren't having services. I don't know how y'all did, but their lobby didn't have church. They shut church down because unprecedented. No one knew what to do. Just weird. 
A lot of people just shut church. Our church shut down. A lot of places we were going, and we just went at home. No, we just, and it was real eerie, man. I don't know about here, but Birmingham traffic was real bad. But, man, during that time, there's no traffic. We drive down the interstate, and then there's like two, three cars. That was real eerie. You drive down, and you're like, man, there's nobody here. That was just wild. And uh, we was out there, man, no one's out there, and we just start having, tr- pretty soon it got to the point we didn't even know what day it was. Anybody, were you that way? I mean, really, we didn't know if it was Sunday, Monday, we're like, what day is it? The only day we knew it was was Friday. Remember that? Because Friday night was Whataburger night. <laughs> Friday night, Whataburger, let's go. But everything else, man, it was just, we didn't know. She's, my wife said, you know what, since we're not having church, why don't, we just have, why don't you just preach at the house? You're a preacher. And I'm like, now, it's one thing when your wife says something like that to you, you know, and you're like, oh. I said, well, all right, Lou. <laughs> you know, she's got more faith right now, you know, I said, all right, you're, like, you, you, you're the one, all right, love. And I said, if I'm going to preach, you're going to have to listen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm still trying to get it right, by the way. Amen. <laughs> you know, and. So we did. She'd play and piano and sing, and I'd preach. We'd have a good time by ourselves. I remember one time in particular there by ourselves. Whole world crazy. And we're wondering, man, what are we going to do now? She said, why don't we sing? I said, yeah, let's sing. She said, what song you want to sing? I said, how about that song we sing about Job? She said, yeah. And we began to sing that song, man, as the sun rose that morning on the day of Job's trial. He rose up to serve God as any other day. Whoo! Man, we got to sing that, man, down there at the end. It said this. It says, I served him before, and I serve him today. Man, right there, I had myself a Holy Ghost fit, amen. I said, I served him before with meetings. We'll serve him after with no meetings. We served him before under Trump. Matter of fact, we served him under Clinton. We served him under Bush, the first one, the second one. We served him under Reagan. We served him under all of them. We served him under Obama. Bless God. We'll serve him under Biden. We'll serve him under whoever. Because, man, man, because the Lord gave, the Lord said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy of all the praise. Man, he's the best there ever is. There's no one like him. No one's better than my Savior. I mean, he gave his life for me. I could give my best for him. He laid his life down for me. I could live my life for him. His blood was shed for me. I'm going to give it all for him. That's how you run off them crows. Just praise and brag on the Lord Jesus. Sing in his holy name. That'll help you. Lord in heaven, we ask your blessing, Lord God, what was preached tonight. May it help your people. Encourage them, Lord God. Lord God, help us to stand true and faithful and run off these things, Lord God. And Lord, we can't do it ourselves. We sure need you and your spirit. But God, you've given us the tools, Lord God. You give us a Bible, Lord God, this old precious King James Bible, Lord. You give us, Lord God, uh, things, the armor of God, Lord. And help us to stand true for your holy name. Bless now this servant, rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen.